Hello and welcome to Jurisdiction Academy's YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about the constitutional law questions from CLAT PG 2022 paper. We have also made video on the previous year questions of CLAT PG 2023. So do check out that video as well. So coming to this video, in this we will analyze the questions that have come from constitutional law in the 2022 CLAT PG paper, and we'll try to understand what kind of questions they have asked. So, coming to the first passage that was asked from constitutional law, the first passage was from the collegium system, that is the appointment to judiciary. So, in this, there were six questions. The first question was with respect to the judgment from which the excerpt has been taken. So, it was a recent judgment of Lok Prahari in which the Supreme Court has interpreted. Articles two twenty four a and other provisions of the Constitution. So the first question was that the above excerpt has been taken from which of the following judgments, where the Supreme Court sought to activate a dormant provision of the Constitution for the appointment of ad hoc judges. So the right answer was option C, Lok Prahari versus Union of India. Second question was again related to this case in which they asked which of the following dormant provision has been invoked by the Supreme Court for the appointment of ad hoc judges. So you had to tell the article number. So the correct answer for this was Article Two Twenty Four A. The third question was with respect to a landmark case in which they asked that in the fourth judges case, which is the Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association versus Union of India, what was the majority? Uh, in that judgment, so the correct answer was four is to one. Now this could have been slightly difficult for few candidates since it related to the strength by which this judgment was decided. The next question was with respect to again a landmark case with respect to ad hoc judges. So the question was in which of the following cases the Supreme Court observed that for appointment of a retired judge as an ad hoc judge, consent of such judge is a prerequisite for his appointment. So the correct answer was option C. Union of India versus Sankal Chand and Himmatlal Seth. The next question was with respect to a law commission report number. Now this was not easy to answer, but this report was actually cited in the Lok Prahari judgment, so this could be said to be related to that recent case. So the question was that in which of the following reports the law commission advocated for appointment of retired judges as ad hoc judges in the interest of clearing backlog of cases. So the right answer was. Hundred and eighty eighth report on proposals for continuation of high tech fast track commercial divisions in high courts. The last question from this passage was based on your understanding of the collegium system. So the question was that which of the following is true with respect to the origin of the collegium system? So the right answer was that the constitution does not provide for establishment of the collegium system. Now we come to the second passage that was asked from constitutional law. The second passage was based on Article Nineteen, specially right to protest. So this was also traceable to a fairly recent case of the Shaheen Bagh protest. So the first question, that is question nineteen, was about which judgment has this passage been taken from? So the right answer was option D, Amit Sani versus Commissioner of Police, which is the Shaheen Bagh judgment of twenty twenty. The next question was about a landmark case, and with this case, in this question, they asked which of the following judgment is not related to right to assemble. So the right answer was option B, Sampurn Pahura versus Union of India. The next question was again about a landmark judgment of in reference Ram Lila Maidan incident. So the question was that which of the following statement is not correct. So this uh, is fairly easy to answer if you look at all the options. So the right option in this case was that right to sleep is not part of Article Twenty One. This is an incorrect statement so far as this case is concerned. The next question was about which of the following statement is incorrect in relation to right to assemble under the Constitution. So this was directly from your understanding of Article Nineteen, and you had to tick the incorrect option. So the incorrect option was that reasonable restriction uh, can be. Under right to assemble as sovereignty and integrity of India, public order and morality. So this was incorrect because these are not the restrictions on right to protest. The next question was with respect to the judgment that is traceable to the finding that the rule prohibiting demonstration by government servants is discussed in which case. So the right answer was Kamishwar Prasad versus State of Bihar. Last question was with respect to the bench of the Shaheen Bagh judgment. So the correct answer is option C. Now coming on to the next passage that we had for constitutional law, as you can see that in CLAT PG 2022 paper they had asked 
uh, six questions per passage. So the next passage was with respect to uh, the constitutional validity of uh, one of the state laws, which was based on the interpretation of Article 254. So in this case, the first question was with respect to which of the following is not an element to test repugnancy under Article 254. So the right answer was option B and C. Both are not elements. And only option A, which is repugnancy between Central and State Act within the concurrent list, was the right answer. So the correct answer was option D. The next question was with respect to entry 7 of list 3. So they were asking that which of the following is untrue with respect to entry 7 of the concurrent list. So the right answer was option B, that contract relating to agricultural land does not fall under entry 7. So this was the right answer. The next question was with respect to the doctrine. So they were asking that when the state legislature enacts a law on a state matter, but it incidentally also uh, encroaches or covers a subject of the parliament list, then what is this doctrine called? So the right answer was option B, pith and substance. The next question was with respect to the assent of the president in Article 254.2. So the question was that the word assent means what? So the right answers were both option B and C and that is why the correct answer was option B. That is both B and C. The next question was with respect to the applicability of 254.2 as to on which list or on which matters does this apply to? So the right answer was option C, concurrent list. The last question on this passage was about, again, Article 254, that in case of inconsistency between a parliamentary law and a state law, what happens to the state law? So the right answer was option B, that the state law is void to the extent of the repugnancy. Now moving on to the next passage on constitutional law. This passage was partly based on constitutional law and administrative law as well. This was about the topic of judicial review of policy decisions. So in this case, they cited something from a COVID-related uh, issue in which the vaccination policy was challenged. So question 79 was with respect to uh, the power of judicial review. So the question was that which of the following statements is untrue. Option A was policy making is the sole domain of the executive. That is true. Judicial review may be exercised on public health policies. That is also true. Option C, which talks about separation of power, restricting power of judicial review is an untrue statement. So that is why option C was correct. Next was again an interpretation based question in which they asked that soliciting constitutional justification for executive policies during pandemic appears to be what kind of function of the court. So the correct answer was option A, that is necessary function of the court. Next question was that in this case, the union opposed judicial intervention on the ground that this restricts the scope for executive to explore solutions. So they were asking that this argument was supported on which ground. So this is again a question of interpretation. But if you look at the options, you will see that option A and B seems like reasonable grounds and option C does not really fall in that bracket. So the right answer was option D, that is both A and B. The next question was again with respect to judicial review in which they asked that an intrusion by judiciary in executive is prohibited under separation of power, except when it is necessary to enforce the express provisions of the constitution. This statement is true. Second statement was that an intrusion by judiciary in executive is allowed when it is necessary to safeguard rights relating to life, liberty or property. This is also a true statement and that is why option A, that is both 1 and 2 are true, is right. Next question was about that which policy was challenged in this case. So this was a question based on this case particularly and the right answer was liberalized vaccination policy that is option B. The next question was with respect to where is public health found in the constitution. So the right answer was entry 6 of state list that is option A. Now coming on to the last passage on constitutional law in this paper the questions were relating to environmental law. So the first question was very easy it was asking that in which article is the fundamental duty to protect the environment is given. So the right answer was option B, 51 AG. The next question was again very straightforward, that under which article the union legislature can make laws for giving effect to international agreements. So the right answer was article 253, that is option C. The next question was that which amendment added entry 17A and 17B in the concurrent list and the right answer was option B, 42nd Amendment Act. The next question was related to a landmark case in which they were asking that out of the four judgments, which of them does not deal with sustainable development? 
So since option A, B and D deal with sustainable development, the right answer was option C, that is Manorma Sachan versus Lucknow Development Authority. The next question was with respect to the public trust doctrine. So it was not really on constitutional law, but the first three questions of this passage were based on constitutional law. So this was related to the environmental law concept. So they were asking what is meant by public trust doctrine and the right answer is option A. Next question was also based on environmental law in which they were asking that which of the doctrines are part of environmental jurisprudence in India. So the right answer was option C that is polluter pays as well as precautionary principle. So this brings us to the end of our discussion on the constitutional law questions in the 2022 paper. If you found this video helpful, please like and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.